Hey YouTube, welcome to the final set review video for Kaldheim. We're going to do all the green cards today and that's going to wrap it up. Let's get started with Arachnoform. Arachnoform is one and a green for an enchantment or a common enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two and has reach and is every creature type. So it doesn't get changeling, but it kind of gets changeling. Um, eh. It's not an awful sideboard card if you find yourself up against a bunch of flyers, perhaps a bunch of flying angels. Um, giving plus two, plus two in reach is cute, but you should be able to get this on the wheel, no problem. And I'm not looking to jam this into my main deck. It, it's not worth it to just put it in your deck, but out of the side, it's not too bad. So pick it up on the wheel. Up next is Battle Mammoth. It's a green mythic. So you know how that goes. Three green green for a creature elephant at mythic. It's a six five with trample. Whenever a permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you may draw a card. You can foretell it for two green green. It's a big stompy elephant and it's probably at least going to draw you a card when your opponent answers it. And if for whatever reason they target other stuff before this, maybe you get to draw more cards. Realistically, I would never, ever expect you to draw more than one card off of this because there will be exactly one creature being targeted with a spell and it will be this one. First pick, great big stompy card, going to be very difficult to deal with and replaces itself when dealt with. Up next is Blessing of Frost. Blessing of Frost is three and a green for a snow sorcery at rare. Distribute X plus one plus one counters among any number of creatures you control where X is the amount of snow spent to cast this spell. Then draw a card for each creature you control with power four or greater. Snow is mana from a snow source. <laughs> that feels like a very circular explanation of what snow is. <laughs> um, so four mana up to four counters get placed because that's the max you could play you do have to draft the snow land yes there will be one in the basic land slot sometimes it will be a snow duel but you do have to draft your snow lands you don't have any in your sideboard getting four snow getting four snow on the regular i think will be a little bit difficult and that makes me hesitant on this card. I'm okay getting two counters on this as long as I'm drawing two cards off of it, I think. But I think you wheel this card. This does not get you into snow at all. This does not get you into green. It's, it's really one of those cards that is a reward when you are in pack two or pack three and you have gotten into the deck and you're like, oh, I have a lot of snow sources. I'll pick this up. So I think this is like a wheel in pack one and then pack two, pack three. It's kind of more like a reward. Up next is Blizzard Brawl. Blizzard Brawl is a single green mana for a snow sorcery at uncommon. Choose target creature you control and target creature you don't control. If you control three or more snow permanents, the creature you control gets plus one, plus zero oh, and gains indestructible until end of turn. Then those creatures fight each other. So this is prey upon if you don't have um, the snow permanence, but snow permanence is nice because it counts your snow creatures. Are there any snow dorks? There are, I believe, a, I think there's a snow dork. Maybe there's not a snow dork, but there's snow artifacts and there's, there's um, the common snow one where you choose a color. That's not going to be in the basic land slot. You're going to be able to get more snow than you think you will into your deck. The trick is how many can you draw? and get on the battlefield before you play them. So Prey Upon is not an amazing removal spell. It used to be back when it first came out in um, Innistrad, um, but it's okay. It's just not amazing. Now, if you have three snow permanents, this is basically a bite spell because your creature is not dying. It's indestructible and it gets plus one plus oh. So this I think is upwards of a second, third pick, but you do have to then go down the snow path you still put this in every green deck but you're way less happy if it is just a prey upon so i start this out second third pick um if i get into the snow deck it's going to stay a very high pick and i want every copy i can get my hands on if i don't get into the snow deck and i'm just green then it's a card that i'll still play but i maybe won't load up on them quite as much 
Up next is Boreal Outrider. Boreal Outrider is two and a green for a snow creature elf warrior at uncommon. It's a three two. Whenever you cast a creature spell, if snow of any of that spell's color was spent to cast it, I hate the way that's written. That creature enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. So this means if I cast a green creature and I used green snow, it gets a counter. If I cast a red creature and I use red snow, I get a counter. It's very weirdly written, but that's what it comes out as. So it's a 3-2 for 3, which is very filler on its own. And then if you are casting any, 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 any creatures after this, which I would expect you to, and you are snow, it's going to be pretty dang decent, I think. If you cast a red creature with green snow, tough luck. Exactly. So yeah, this is basically just putting a counter on most creatures, I would think, that you play after this, unless you somehow only really have snow, like snow forests, and don't have snow of your second color. So I think this is a pretty high pick. I don't know that it's second, third. Second, third is really like... Removal and like utter definers of a deck. I think this is a little bit more fourth, fifth. I think it's a little bit more fourth, fifth than second, third. Would this have been broken if it was any snow? I doubt it would have been broken. It wouldn't be that much different. Um, yeah, it just wouldn't have been that much different, right? Like presumably you're going to have snow of both your colors. I don't think it would have been that much more broken. Um, but yeah, we'll go fourth, fifth pick for this one. But I think it's a pretty good card as long as you're playing snow stuff. Broken Wings is up next. Two and a green for an instant common. It looks like Plummet has just been retired and Broken Wings is now like the go-to card. Uh, destroy target artifact, enchantment, or creature with flying. You can probably main deck one of these. I still wouldn't immediately look to main deck one. Um, but having sagas in the format does make me think a little bit more about main decking and broken wings. Because the great thing about this versus a naturalize or versus a plummet is it hits flying, it hits artifact, it hits enchantments. You're probably going to have a target. Whether that target's worthwhile, it's a little bit hard to say. Um, but yeah, this is on the wheel. You're never picking this with a real pick. You'll get it back around, pick it up then, and decide whether you want it in the side or main deck. But Broken Wings has been pretty okay as a one-up in the main deck. Elderleaf Mentor is up next. Elderleaf Mentor is three and a green for a creature elf warrior at common. It's a three, two. When Elderleaf Mentor enters the battlefield, create a one, one green elf creature, warrior creature token. So it's a three, two for four. Eh. Uh, but actually it's a four, three for four. Eh. But it does make two elves. And green black is very into elves green white is kind of into elves and is into tokens so there's stuff going on here this is not a high pick it's in the sixth to eighth range you can probably wheel it with some consistency i think and you're basically just not playing this you know as readily in like a red green deck or a uh, a green blue deck perhaps but otherwise it'll be fine um, but pick this relatively late up next is elven bow this is it, our last equipment. Elven Bow is a single green mana for an artifact equipment at Uncommon. When Elven Bow enters the battlefield, you may pay two. If you do, make a 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature token and attach Elven Bow to it. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus two, and has reach. Equip three. So three mana for a one, or a two, three reach. That's fine, but that's arguably more of a... Uh, like a sideboard card than anything. We've played spiders like that before. But when it dies, you still get the bow, which you can then equip to something else for three mana, which is a fair bit. Again, this is another piece of equipment that I'm not super stoked on, and I'm putting it on the wheel. I'm just not valuing these equipment very highly. I'm not, I'm not super into it. Gonna wheel the elven bow. Up next is Elvish Warmaster. Elvish Warmaster is one and a green for a creature elf warrior at rare. It's a 2-2. Whenever one or more other elves enter the battlefield under your control, create a 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature token. This ability triggers only once each turn. Pay five green green. Creature elves you control get plus two plus two and gain teth touch until end of turn. So I am on first pick for this. Obviously, you then need to go down the elf route. 
you don't pick this and then end up in like green i guess green blue and you have a bunch of changelings it's still fine because those are still elves so you probably actually just end up playing this in most decks um but yeah you obviously want to start valuing elves because getting an extra elf every time you play an elf is pretty decent although it is only once a turn so don't think that you're going to play like three elves in a turn and get three elves and then five green green is a lot of mana to spend but if you end up there giving your team plus two plus two is pretty nice death touch is a cool little bonus um it's going to mean that all of your creatures will get their blockers for sure and maybe you win the game through infect we'll talk about that in a second you probably won't um yeah this card's a fine first pick you build around it a little bit there's the slight chance that maybe it's just a bear but yeah first pick for elvish warmaster up next is asika god of the tree asika is one green green for a legendary creature god at mythic it's a one four with vigilance tap to add one mana of any color other legendary creatures you control have vigilance tap add one mana of any color three mana one four vigilance mana dork is something that i'm pretty okay with i've played three mana mana dorks before that block well and they've been Okay, they're nowhere near as good as one or two mana ones for sure, but they're okay. My other legendaries also get to tap for mana of any color. There's no legendary slot. There's one of each color combo at, at on common, and then there's some rares kicking around. I don't know that you're going to be like flush with legendary creatures, so I'm not super stoked on that. But on the front of this card, it's like a fourth, fifth pick. What's the back say? The back is the Prismatic Bridge. White, blue, black, red, green for a legendary enchantment at Mythic. At the beginning of your upkeep, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature or planeswalker card. Put it onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. That's amazing if you can cast it. Luckily, you have Asika out. Except, oh no. Oh no, I played the front half of Asika. How, 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 how do I, how do I get to the backside? Um, this is a, a, an achievement to hit during the draft. It's not something that I would recommend that you go out and attempt to do. Ah, yes. You draft two of the mythic, of course. <laughs> um, yeah, this is an achievement that you do when you're bored and you're looking to have some fun. You play the mana rocks, you play the, um, the red green thing that makes icy mana lifts. You do that, you go all in and you try to get this because if you get this down and you're getting a free creature every single turn, it's going to be pretty good. Um, but yeah, I'm putting a Sika as like a fourth, fifth pick. I'm never expecting to play the backside. Um, but if I do, I'm going to have some fun with it. This is a fun card. This is not a card that you're picking to uh, just win a game out of nowhere. So fourth, fifth, fourth, fifth pick for Asika, God of the Tree. Asika's Chariot is up next. Asika's Chariot is three and a green for a 4-4 four, four legendary artifact vehicle at rare. When Asika's Chariot enters the battlefield, create two 2-2 two, two green cat creature tokens. When Asika's Chariot attacks, create a token that's a copy of target token you control. True for... This reminds me of the Enchanted Carriage, I think it was called, an Eldraine. It was a big vehicle that made its crew... But then if your opponent interacted with that crew, you just had a big vehicle that was tough to crew. And this feels like the same thing. The nice thing, though, is if you do get an attack in, at least you start like rebuilding your cats or perhaps other creature tokens. But this feels slightly shaky to me. I don't think it's a slam dunk bomb at all. Because it's four, the carriage was a five mana two two. The carriage was not a two two. The carriage was a five five, wasn't it? The carriage was big. It was a four four. Yeah, the carriage was definitely not a two two. It made two one one, so it was a two two. Now, I mean, at the very least, this is call the cavalry. Sort of, you get two two twos for four. carriage itself was a 4-4 okay yeah i don't know where i am at that on this i don't think it's a bomb i think it's way 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 closer to call the cavalry than anything else i 
And if I do attack with it, I get another token. As long as my opponent does not kill my for my my carriage, my chariot. I don't know where I am on this. I think I'm on like fourth, fifth. I think I'm pretty far away from it being like a first pick bomb. I'm going to go fourth, fifth on this. I'll keep an eye on it. The trick is most of the tokens that you're going to have are going to be what? Like, I guess the angel tokens. The problem being that angel tokens are a bit better in black, white, because a lot of the cards that make the angel tokens are black, white, or are in some way related to black, white. Definitely pick removal over this. I'm definitely picking removal over this. Yeah, I'm definitely picking bombs over this. So I guess we're on fourth, fifth for Asika's Chariot. Yeah, if your opponent kills the Chariot, you still have a two, two, twos, which I guess they used removal. So it's still definitely way better than Call the Cavalry. I'm still on fourth, fifth pick. I'm still on fourth, fifth pick, which means I'll probably never play it because people are going to take it first pick. Up next is uh, Finn the Fangbearer. Finn the Fangbearer is one and a green for a legendary creature, human warrior at uncommon. It's a one, three death toucher. I like those stats. This is a death toucher that blocks little things and stays alive, which is nice. And whenever a creature you control with death touch deals combat damage to a player, that player gets two poison counters. If a player has 10 poison counters, they lose the game. You're probably not doing this. There's not that much death touch running around. If you're getting in with these death touch creatures, you're probably getting pretty close to killing your opponent through damage. This is a cute little thing and designed for other formats. It's a 1-3 death toucher for two. That's a fourth to fifth pick, maybe sixth to eighth pick for me, but that's about it. Ping them uh, deals combat damage to a player. That player gets two poison counters. It's got to be combat damage. Um, isn't infect poison like a nine on the storm scale? I don't know where it is on the storm scale, but it's back just in one card though. So yeah, I think this is around like a fourth, fifth, maybe sixth or eighth pick. I think I'm mostly playing this as a one, three death toucher for two. I don't think I'm trying to do the poison stuff. Up next is glittering frost. Glittering frost is two and a green for a snow enchantment aura at common enchant land. Enchanted land is snow. I like that. I like that phrase. Whenever enchanted land is tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional mana, one mana of any color. Hi, are you looking for snow lands and or fixing? This is the card that you want. If you are not, you don't play this. Um, because enough people are going to be looking to splash and get snow. I don't know that you can reliably wheel this. Um, so I'm going to put the six through eighth pick. But again, you're not taking this just because like, ooh, I'm in green. This is not a signal that green is open. This is not an amazing card. This is just a, an important card for some decks. So I'm going to put it on six through eighth pick. I will say as well, don't overvalue snow. I think a lot of people are, might go into this and be like, oh, I've heard snow is really good. I'm, I'm going to pick all the snow basics. And then they end up in a deck where like their snow basics aren't doing anything for them. And they spent all those picks on those cards. So don't overvalue it. But be aware that there are decks that are going to desperately want as much as possible. But not every deck will. Up next is Not Vold Recluse. Not Vold Recluse is two and a green for a creature spider at common. It's a 4-2 reach, which is awful. Awful, 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 awful. The point of spiders is that they block forever. They may not kill the creature, but they block forever. This one blocks once, but it does eat angels and blocking once is fine. But this is a card you pick up on the wheel. You put it in your sideboard. It's a three mana four, two, which is, those are stats that I have learned to be okay with. Although in an aggressive deck, usually it does stall one, one flyers, but there's not that many of those kicking around. You'd rather have the bow. Maybe bow doesn't kill, um, 
angels quite as well as this does. So yeah, this is on the wheel anyways, and whether or not you put it in the main deck, I think will be an interesting discussion a little bit later on. Put the bow on it. Fair, fair. Up next is Grizzled Outrider. Grizzled Outrider is four and a green for a creature elf warrior at common. It's a five, five. This is the first vanilla card we've had. Interesting. Five mana, five, five vanilla with one relevant type of elf. Okay. Wheel it. Play it if you need a five, five for five. That's it. Guardian Gladewalker is up next. Guardian Gladewalker is one and a green for a creature shapeshifter at common. It's a one, one changeling. When Guardian Gladewalker enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. It's Dauntless Survivor, but it's a changeling. Get it on the wheel. Play it if you have a spot. Play it if you really want a changeling. Play it if you really want to put a counter on something, but that's fine. Get it on the wheel. You don't need to spend a real pick on this card. Up next is Horizon Seeker. Horizon Seeker is two and a green for a 3-2 creature human warrior at common. Boast one and a green. Search your library for a basic land card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Fairly filler 3-2 for three. Um, no relevant types. What, did something care about warriors? Am I just making that up? Booster, Oracle Text, Warrior. No, nothing cared about Warrior. No, nothing cared about Warrior. Keep in mind, though, of course, that maybe Warrior is the creature type that is shared amongst things, so it's possible. But really, this does not have many creature uh, types that are relevant here. It's a it's a very filler 3-2 for 3. If you're fixing, this will probably let you fix once. 3-2 is not that hard to kill, and if your opponent realizes that you getting all of the lands that you need is an important thing, they're going to throw a 2-2 a two -two or a 2-1 or something in front of it. I think you can pick this up on the wheel without any real difficulty. Don't spend a real pick on it. Pretty filler. It's not going to be too bad in your deck, but there's better cards out there, right? And if you're splashing, here you go. Here's a great way to help you splash. Great way to help you splash. Up next is Icehide Troll. Icehide Troll is two and a green for a snow creature troll warrior at common. It's a two, three. Pay snow, snow. Icehide Troll gets plus two, plus oh, and gains indestructible until end of turn. Tap it. Two, three for three. Relatively filler. It's a snow permanent for where that matters. Um, nothing cares about trolls. Trolls is one of the tribes, but nothing specifically cares about trolls. If you have snow, snow, it's a four, three indestructible, which is very nice. Blocks perfectly attacks really well if you have snow 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 it's a six three that attacks very well can this ability be used while attacking it can you can tap an uh, you can tap a tapped thing oh, sorry an effect that tells you an effect that taps something can be done on a tapped thing you just can't like pay the cost of tapping something on something that is already tapped so yeah you can use this on uh attacks for sure um yeah this card's very good um i think it's a i mean it's 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 nothing above a six through eighth pick but i think it's a six through eighth pick i, I don't think i'm waiting for the wheel on this uh, i want this in my snow cards quite a bit yeah tap can't be part of the cost it has to be after the colon um, yeah, six or eighth pick. I think Ice Hide Troll is very good. I wonder if people are going to underrate it. We'll see. In Search of Greatness is up next. In Search of Greatness is green green for an enchantment at rare. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may cast a permanent spell from your hand with converted mana cost equal to one plus the highest converted mana cost among other permanents you control without paying its mana cost. If you don't, scry one. Let me see your ratings. Let me see your ratings on this one. Click on, click on the screen. Show me where you're rating this. F. Wheel. Second, third pick. First pick. All over the place. Got it. I don't like this card. I don't like this card. You're playing it on two. That's your turn. 
Start of turn three, you can play a three drop from your hand if you have explicitly a three drop. If you don't, you're scrying one, which is not bad. One of the cards that I loved from Eldritch Moon was an 04 that scried every turn, but it was an 04. It blocked. This card doesn't block. I think it's so... You can play a one drop. Doesn't count itself. It counts itself. Among other permanents you control. Is other permanents referring to in search of greatness or in, is other permanents referring to the permanent that you're attempting to cast? It's other than itself. Okay, so you could, assuming that's the case, then you could play a one drop. Oh, well, cool. That doesn't make it any better. <laughs> that doesn't make it any better ever. Uh, I don't even think you can put a one drop into play because one null. One plus. Well, no, it's one plus. Null is zero. One plus null is one. Isn't it? I don't know. Yeah, your lands have CMC zero. Your lands have CMC zero. Zero plus one right there. Um, so yeah, this is basically scry one and a few times throughout the game. Because at some point, you're going to be hitting your five drops. And then you're at the top of your curve. I think this card's an F. I think it's a trap. I think you should not play it. I think you should let other people play this and lose their drafts while you pick better cards and draft very well. Up next is Jaspera Sentinel. Jaspera Sentinel is a single green mana for a creature elf rogue at common. It's a 1-2 with reach. Tap an untapped creature you control. Add one mana of any color. There are so many better ways to fix your mana. <laughs> so many better ways to fix your mana than tapping two creatures to get one mana of some color. It's a 1-2 reach. That does not stop very much in the air. It's an elf. It's an elf. You can pick this up on the wheel. And if you're desperate for an elf, here you go. But there's better cards in here. Pick it up on the wheel. Realistically, I just don't think you ever play it. What about in sealed? Sealed doesn't exist because paper magic doesn't exist. And sealed is awful on arena. <laughs> Has the effect ever been good outside of Springleaf Drum? Not really. Up next is Jorn Winter. Ah, Jorn Winter. <laughs> Jorn, God of Winter, is two and a green for a legendary snow creature god at rare. It's a 3-3. Whenever Jorn attacks, untap each snow permanent you control. Yeah, I, I'm being facetious. I know there's in home pre-release and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I, have, I haven't played Sealed in a billion and a half years. By which I mean one, but you know. Um, so Jorn God of Winter is three mana for a three, three with vigilance, essentially assuming it attacks and it gives your other things vigilance. Perhaps that's cool. That's cool. This is a totally fine card. I got to build a deck around this guy. It's true. For those who don't know, my name is John Winter. This card is Jorn Winter. Um, backside backside is Caldring the rhyme staff one blue black for a legendary snow artifact at rare tap you may play target snow permanent card from your graveyard this turn if you do it enters the battlefield tapped this should have been my preview card it's true so you can play the target snow permanent card from your graveyard it enters tapped you still have to pay for it Yeah, if you're very, like, blue-black snow zombies, the front half is nice. If you're, like, salt-high snow, if you're salt-high snow, you really have to question which side you're going to play. I think this is probably, I think this is probably, like, second, third pick. I think there's, I think premium monocolor removal is just way better than this, and it could depend on how fast the format is, too. So I'm going to go second, third pick on it. Both halves do hit Snowlands, that's true. This does kind of ramp you, doesn't it? You could uh, play something, attack with it, untap all your Snowlands. That's pretty good, actually. Still second, third pick, I think, but I'm very excited to play this card. Let's get that battle going. This will probably be our last battle here. 
just misses first pick. Yeah, I agree with that. I think the rhyme staff is really strong. Blue black does have some mill in it, specifically mill yourself stuff in it. So you're essentially adding like a second hand to your game. That's probably decent. Can you do it end of opponent's turn? No. I mean, you can, but. You can't cast something outside of timing restrictions off of it. So, like, you can't end of their turn play a sorcery or play a non-flash creature. Uh, most skills to hazmat medic. Rebecca faults with the most assists. Five gold to everybody. Fifteen gold to orcish. Three tanks to hazmat medic. Let's go and fight this three. Get your units in because we're going to do this one early when the stream is at the end. So I'm going to drop a, a, a rare unit here. Uh, unfortunately, we don't know what we're up against. Uh, I'm going to go with Orc Slayer, pop your units in, use your epics. It's the last battle of the day and we will, uh, finish up this set of review. Up next is King Harold's Revenge. King Harold's Revenge is two and a green for a sorcery at common until the end of turn. Target creature gets plus one, plus one for each creature you control and gains trample. It must be blocked this turn if able. Lure. Lure with potentially plus... Three, four, five. And Trample? I like this card a lot. I love this card. People who have not played with Lure that often are going to get wrecked by this card. Did you play against Taunting Arbor Mage? Did you lose when suddenly everything on your board had to block Taunting Arbor Mage? King Harold's Revenge is going to do some work. I love me. Love me some lures and the fact that this could even like you know maybe even make the lure creature live i think is pretty decent hey some wife has it going um only one blocker oh am i misreading this oh i'm misreading this misreading this misreading this misreading this misreading this it's not lure it's not lure it's bad <laughs> it's bad so it must be blocked not must be blocked by everything. Your opponent can put their little 1-1. One, one. Of course, your creature is still big. It still has trample. But this is much less good than I had thought because I thought this was straight up a lure. King Harold is a false king. This is a wheel card at absolute best. Um, you know, if you go wide, it is still plus a bunch, plus a bunch and trample which is not a non thing, but this is a wheel at absolute best. Yeah, 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 don't trust me, don't trust me. I just want every card to be a lure, okay? And every card can't be a lure. Up next is Kolvori, God of Kinship. Kolvori is two green green for a legendary creature god at rare, it's a two four. As long as you control three or more legendary creatures. <laughs> Good luck. Kolvori gets plus four plus two and has vigilance could be a six six for four pay one and a green tap look at the top six cards of your library you may reveal a legendary card from among them and put it into your hand put the rest of the bottom of your library in a random order so yes there's a number of legendaries in this format but there's only one per color combo at on common and the rest are rares and mythics I don't think you're casually getting three other legendaries plus this one. What is common plus uncommon legendaries? There's no common legendaries, are there? Let's do a super quick check on that. Uh, type legendary. There are 37 legendaries. They are all rare or uncommon or mythic. Yeah. I don't think that you are turning this on. I think it's a four mana, two, four, and that's it. That's not exciting. And then it can dig you for, for perhaps your one other legendary or maybe your second other legendary that you might have, which is not bad. You know, this card's not awful. It's just a little bit on kind of the wheel here. It's got a backside though. What's the backside do? One in a green for a legendary artifact, the Ringheart Crest. As the Ringheart Crest enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. 
Tap, add green. Spend this mana only to cast a creature spell of the chosen type or a legendary creature type. It does only need two others. Nope. Yep, it does. It does only need two others. That's still a little tricky to get your hands on, I think. Um, so this is a mana rock for two. That's not the best thing in the world either, but it's okay-ish. It doesn't help you cast your spells. It only helps you cast creatures of those specific types. I think this might honestly just be the worst god. I think it might just be the worst god. And then if you randomly end up with a bunch of legendaries, cool, you sort of got there. But like the other thing here is if we're looking at the uncommon legendaries, there's one per color combo. And you're not putting two copies of your green white one in your green white deck on the battlefield at the same time. So that's not helping you. So realistically, if you're playing a two color deck, you have to have a rare other legendary at least to play this card, unless you're playing five color gods like Sidian, uh, which of course he may do. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm just relatively out on Kolvari overall. I think it's a very low pick as far as a rare goes. I think realistically it's like, like I'm, I'm not playing this card because I'm going to sixth to eighth pick it or wheel it and everybody's going to first pick it. So maybe six through eighth, but I don't really like Kolvari here. Up next is Litiara Glade Warden. Litiara Glade Warden is three and a green for a creature shapeshifter at uncommon. It's a three, three changeling. Pay two and a green, tap it, exile a creature card from your graveyard, put two plus one plus one counters on target creature, activate this ability only anytime you can cast a sorcery, unfortunately. It's a hill giant changeling. That's okay, but not amazing. Pay two and a green to, uh, Exile a creature card from your graveyard at sorcery speed, which means you're not doing an end of turn, so you're turning a blocker off. You're not attacking with this. But putting two counters on a creature, like, that's not nothing. That's a nice little mana sink later in the game where maybe, for whatever reason, you're not attacking and getting those two counters would be pretty handy to have. Um, so I think this is fine. It's not a high pick. It's around... I don't think it's as high as fourth, fifth for me. I think I'm on sixth through eighth here. Um... I don't quite think I'm going quite as low as Wheel, but yeah, I'll go 6th through 8th for Litiara Glade Warden. Remember Full Party? Full Party did not require a whole bunch of rares. Up next is Mammoth Growth. Mammoth Growth is 2 and a green for an instant at common target creature. Gets plus 4, plus 4 until end of turn. Foretell for a single green. Pick this up on the wheel just like basically every other combat trick. If you have a spot, you can put it in. And hey, you have a little combat trick. But generally, you can play better cards. But if you have space for a combat trick, cool, but don't spend a real pick on that. Up next is Masked Vandal. Masked Vandal is one and a green for a creature shapeshifter at common. It's a 1-3 changeling. When Masked Vandal enters the battlefield, you may exile uh, a creature card from your graveyard. And if you do, you exile target artifact or enchantment on opponent controls. So two mana, 1-3 with relevant creature types because it has all of them and a very narrow ability of artifact or enchantment hate if you have a creature that you can exile from your graveyard, which you probably will, but I think you wheel this, and I don't think you always play it. I think you side it in like you would side in a naturalize, perhaps. Maybe if you're really looking for an elf or a berserker or whatever creature type you're specifically looking for, you can pop it in a little bit higher, but I'm going to wheel the Masked Vandal. Up next is Old Growth Troll. Old Growth Troll is green, green, green for a creature troll warrior at rare to 4-4 with trample. When Old Growth Troll dies, if it was a creature, return it to the battlefield. It's an aura enchantment with Enchant Forest you control, and Enchanted Forest has tap, add green, green, and pay one tap, sacrifice this land, create a tapped 4-4 green troll warrior creature token with trample. Ugh. Sagas, I think this might be main deckable. Sort of, but remember with sagas is you need that like removal spell for that saga now. You've got two turns before they've gotten all of the value out of their saga, which is why I much prefer like invoke the divine where you can be like, oh, you just played a saga. Cool. Instant speed. Kill it. Whereas this one is like crap. They played a saga. 
It's coming back to my turn before I can play this card. I need to hope I have a creature in the graveyard. Let's hope I have a creature in the graveyard to exile this turn. Oh no, I don't. They're going to get stage two of that saga. I don't like it for sagas, whereas I might main deck um, uh, Invoke the Divine and uh, Broken Wings for sagas. In both Dom and Theros, we main decked Enchantment Hate. Theros had way more enchantments. Dominaria had way more playable artifacts. The artifacts in this set are trash. Anyways, Old Growth Troll is a pretty solid card, but you do have to be green to play this. A 4-mana 3-3 three, three Trample, if it comes down early, is a very good card. When they kill this and answer it, it comes back and ramps you a little bit until such point you decide to sack that land and get this card back, essentially, by getting a token version of it. Not exactly it, but a 4-4 four, four Trample. I'm hesitant about first picking it just because green, green, green is a commitment. You have to be playing heavy green to play this. Um... But I'll play green. I'll first pick this. Try and stop me. First pick on Old Growth Troll. Up next is Path to the World Tree. You have to be willing to throw it away, though, when you discover that you're not actually green. Path to the World Tree is up next. Path to the World Tree is one in a green for an enchantment at Uncommon. When Path to the World Tree enters the battlefield, search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it in your hand, and shelf your library. It's rampant growth. Pay two white Black, white, blue, black, red, green, sacrifice path to the world tree. Here we go. We're going to get something real good, right? You gain two life. You draw two cards. Target opponent loses two life. Path to the world tree deals two damage to up to one target creature. And you make a 2-2 two, two bear. Oh, yeah. Sorry, it's not rampant growth because it goes to your hand, not to the battlefield. No. <laughs> if you're splashing, grab this card to, uh, you know, help you get the color that you need. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't go to the battlefield, it goes to your hand. But if you're splashing, here you go. You can wheel this card. I am not building a five color deck to get there by gaining two life and drawing two cards and dealing two damage and getting a bear. Wheel this card. Up next is Ravenous Lindworm. Ravis, Ravenous Lindworm is four green green for a creature worm at common. It's a 6-6 six, six. when it ETBs, you gain four life. It's Honey Mammoth. But apparently Kaltheim either doesn't have mammoths or doesn't have honey. But it does have Lindworms. It's Honey Mammoth. You can pick it up on the wheel generally. You don't want to load up on them. I've heard tales of somebody doing that and it didn't work out well for them. Um, but the first one's fine. But you can wheel this you can get one of these if you want it so wheel yourself a ravenous lindworm up next is realm walker realm walker is two and a green for a creature shapeshifter at rare it's a two three changeling as realm walker there is unfortunately no meat it would seem as realm walker enters the battlefield choose a creature type you may look at the top card of your library at any time just do it just do it because it says you're allowed to you may cast creature spells of the chosen type from the top of your library so it's a 2-3 three for 3, obviously base level here. It's a totally filler card that you would get on the wheel, but being able to potentially cast stuff off the top is pretty decent. You built your deck. You're going to know if you're an elf deck. You're going to know if you're... What are the other green types? Green-black elves. Green-blue is like snow things. Green-white is elves-humans tokens. Green-red is things i guess green base doesn't have a perfect tribe where you're like ah i'm going to be this but you've built your deck you know what tribe is going to be the most likely or the tribe that you're most def desperately going to be looking for and like sidian says if you cast one off of this off of the top it's probably okay elf i think is probably going to be the heavy heavy pick for a lot of green decks warrior also does have a lot of decent hits i think this is a first pick and well, no, I think I'm picking premium removal over this. Let's go second, third pick on this. And then make sure that you build a bit of a tribal deck. You know, get a bunch of changelings in there since they're all creature types. And then go from there. Good card. Up next is Rootless U. Rootless U is three green green for a creature tree, freak, tree folk at uncommon. It's a 5-4. When Rootless U dies, search your library for a creature card with power or toughness six or greater. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. 
Five four for five is not horrible, but it's not great. Tree folk is not a creature type that matters. When it dies, you get to go and get a bigger thing. You're probably not playing that many things with six toughness or greater. So hopefully you haven't drawn it already. This is always the thing that I hate with this. Like, what if I drew my one thing that has six toughness? Because how many am I playing? It's still just a 5-4 for 5, which is not the worst in the world. But I don't think this card is by any means amazing. So I'm putting this on, on the wheel. And again, yeah, a tree without reach. <sighs> It, it, it could get your 06 aux, that's true. Um, it's a 5 4 for 5. I'll put it at 6 to 8th pick, but I'm not super stoked on it. Whoa, don't zoom in. There we go. Up next is Roots of Wisdom. Roots of Wisdom is one and a green for a sorcery at common. Mill three cards, then return a land card or elf card from your graveyard to your hand if you can't draw a card. So you mill three, so you're hoping to do some of the the like black green recursion shenanigans a little bit, perhaps. Maybe there's some of those green blue um, shenanigans as well. Then you can return a land or an elf. So hopefully you've got a lot of elves. There's a decent chance of you returning a land. So this is one in a green draw a land. And if you can't return a land or an elf, not if you don't want to, but if you can't, you draw a card. This card's bad. I'm not playing this card. I think it's an F. I don't want it. Don't want it. Don't want it at all. Rune of Might. Rune of Might is one and a green for an enchantment or a rune at uncommon enchant permanent. When Rune of Might enters the battlefield, draw a card. As long as enchanted permanent is a creature, it gets plus one, plus one, and has trample. As long as enchanted permanent is an equipment, it has equipped creature, gets plus one, plus one, and has trample. The final rune. And I... Th I... I have to say I like this. I have to say I like this because I like Satessan Training. Now, Satessan Training was in a set that deeply cared about enchantments, but plus one, plus O, oh, draw a card and trample was fine. Plus one, plus one, trample and draw a card is ever so slightly better. I think this might be the only good rune. And good is still a strong word. Good is a pretty strong word here. I'm going to go 6th through 8th pick. But this one I think I'm going to play. Whereas the other ones are like, eh, I don't really want to spend a card on playing them, even though you do draw a card. But I don't I don't value cantripping that highly. I want all of my cards to be good. In modern, limited magic, there's no excuse to play a bad card just because it draws a card. And yes, they are on common, so you're not loading up on these. So 6th through 8th pick for Rune of Might. Up next is Sarulf's Packmate. Sarulf's Packmate, the blue rune is bad. I don't think it's good. Putting an entire card in your deck that just gives flying and no power and toughness boost. I need my auras to give me power and toughness. I'm not playing an entire card in my deck to give something flying. It's a hard sell for me to play a kite sail a lot of the time, and that I can reuse. I can't reuse the runes. Unless I also play an equipment and attach them to the equipment. So I do think the green one is better. Um, Seraph's Packmate is three and a green for a three, three. Uh, ETBs draws a card, so it's just literally better than Draga Visionary. And you can uh, foretell it for one and a green. Solid card. Um, People loved Draga Visionary, which was a good card, but people loved that card. I don't know why. Um, like fourth to fifth pick, I, I think is high for this card. I think it's sixth through eighth. It is still just a hill giant that draws a card, which is fine. Good even. You're playing it. But I'm not going fourth, fifth here. I'm going to go sixth through eighth for this card. The fact that it foretells for cheap is cute and nice. I think I'm just really trying to uh, rally against the perhaps unnecessary love for Draga Visionary or, or overrated love for Draga Visionary. 
by saying that it is slightly better or slightly worse than that. So six through eight for Sorrel's Packmate. Up next is Sculptor of Winter. Sculptor of Winter is one in a green for a snow creature, elf rogue at common. It's a two two. Tap it to untap target snow land. So here we've got ourselves a bit of a, uh, a snow mana dork in a sense, assuming you have the snow land to untap. Um, it's a bear at the absolute worst. It's a rogue, which is not terribly relevant. It's an elf that could be very relevant. I think this is a decent card. I always like me some mana dorks. The one trick here is to remember that this is not an arbor elf. You need to make sure you are going to have snow lands in play to untap for this to be a mana dork. But I think I'm still going to pick this a little bit highly. Um, at around a fourth, fifth pick, I, I like mana dorks. I like mana dorks a lot. So fourth, fifth pick for a Sculptor of Winter, although I think it is a weakish fourth, fifth pick. Up next is Snakeskin Veil. Snakeskin Veil is a single green mana for an instant at common. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. It gains hexproof until end of turn. It's a uh, Ranger's Guile, but you get a counter. Ranger's Guile just gives plus one, plus one until end of turn. It's not a good card. You pick this up on the wheel. You definitely do not pick this 6th or 7th or 8th pick. You, you, you pick this late, and you don't always play it, but sometimes you have a spot for it. And sometimes it just protects your bomb really, really well and adds a counter to your bomb. It could turn your good card into a bomb based on power and toughness stats. But it's still on the wheel. You're not taking it any higher. Up next is Spirit of the Elder Guard. Spirit of the Elder Guard is 3 and a green for a snow creature bear spirit. <laughs> These snow creature XXs are just one word too many to say. At Uncommon, it's an 04. When Spirit of the Elder Guard enters the battlefield, search your library for a Snowland card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. Spirit of the Elder Guard gets plus one plus 0 for each other snow permanent you control. So it's an 04 for four that goes and gets you one of your snow lands, which you really hopefully have, assuming you're playing this card. And it becomes a 1-4. You have your other snow lands and your other, uh, it counts snow permanents, right? Yeah, snow permanents. So your other snow creatures are growing this as well. I need this to be a 3 4 to be fine. Well, I guess I've played two fours for four in the past, but not, they've not been great. 3 4, this is okay ish. 4 4, hey, we've hit the vanilla test. 5-4, it's getting bigger, and it just gets bigger and dumber from there, but not necessarily better. I think 6th through 8th pick is this, just because if you're in this deck, if you're in like blue-green specifically, you're probably going to want to be looking to get those snow lands as much as possible. Maybe it even gets you your first snow land of the game. Maybe you don't have one yet. And the fact that the creature is not amazing right away doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad card. I think we go 6th through 8th for this one. It obviously goes into kind of a specific deck here, but 6th through 8th for Spirit of the Elder Guard. Up next is Struggle for Skemfar. Struggle for Skemfar is three and a green for a sorcery at common. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Then that creature fights up to one target creature you don't control. Foretell for a single green mana. It's Hunt the Week. It's Hunt the Week that if we foretell costs a single mana. This is a great card. This is a great, great card. This is definitely not a six through eighth pick. Unless I'm missing something here. It's Hunt the Week, right? Counter, fight. It's Hunt the Week. It's fourth, fifth pick, like at worst. Fourth, fifth pick, I like me a Hunt the Week quite a bit. Very, very, very solid card. Not quite as high as second to third. I don't tend to put fight spells in second and third just because you have to have a creature. You would really prefer a creature that's going to survive the fight but is big enough to survive and kill the thing that you need. So I'm going to go with fourth, fifth pick here for Struggle for Skemfar. Up next is Toski the Bearer of Secrets. Toski Bearer of Secrets is three and a green for a legendary creature squirrel at rare. It's a 1-1. One, one. The spell can't be countered. It's got indestructible. Toski Bearer of Secrets attacks each turn of Able. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Uh, Struggle for Skemfar does get worse in this set because so much of green is small. Eh. Play it on your other cards. Play it on your red cards. Also, your creatures are getting bigger from it. Struggle's great. Struggle's great. Uh, pacifism in this set, though. Pacifism's bad. In this, spe in this set specifically. Toski's not good. 
<laughs> Toski's not good. It's a four mana one one. It attacks each combat of Fable. Your opponent's going to be able to put something in front of it. Whenever anything deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. Am I playing a four mana enchantment? We've had this before, haven't we? We had Reconnaissance something or other. It was a two blue blue enchantment that whenever you dealt combat damage, maybe just with a flyer, you drew a card. Like this is a four mana enchantment because it's never blocking because it's attacking every turn. You can put the black rune on it so it's got death touch. There's some cute things that you can do with this. There's some dumb things that you do with this. Have a beer. Draft your Toski deck. Have fun. If I'm playing to win, I'm not picking this card. They have to block it every turn. I'm pretty okay blocking a 1-1 one, one every turn. <laughs> if I'm in a situation where I can't block a 1-1 one, one every turn, I'm dying anyways. I'm dying anyways. Put this on the wheel, put this on an F, put this wherever you want because I'm never playing it because I'm never first picking it and that's where everybody else is going to first pick it. So, Nuts to your legendary squirrel. Up next is Tyvar Kel. Tyvar Kel is two green green for a legendary planeswalker. Tyvar at mythic starts at three loyalty. Elves you control have tap at a black. Makes all your elves mana dorks. I like that a fair bit. Plus one, put a plus one plus one counter on up to one target elf. On tap it against death touch until end of turn. <laughs> that is exactly how you explain this card. Uh, zero, or sorry, that card, not this card. Zero, create a one one green elf creature token. Minus six, you get an emblem with whenever you cast an elf spell, it gains haste until end of turn, and you draw two cards. Shockingly, the mythic planeswalker is a first pick. Um, it doesn't, no, sorry, it doesn't, it doesn't kill something. So I guess it's not that kind of Planeswalker, but it protects itself with a 1-1 one, one green elf. It adds counters to your other elves and gives death touch whether that be relevant or not. It makes all of your elves mana dorks, which means perhaps you're ramping kind of stupidly at the start of this when you first cast this. If you get this up to six and again you're playing black green elves, you're going to be casting elves that can be hasty and tap to add a black while drawing two cards you can kind of elf ball a little bit with this if you get there mythic planeswalker is a first pick news at 11 the final card the final card is vorniclex monstrous La raider look at how that worked out vorniclex is four green green for a legendary creature phyrexian praetor at mythic it's a six six with trample and haste it's a hasty dreadmaw if you would put one or more counters on a permanent or player, put twice that many on each of those of each of those kind of counters on that permanent or player instead. If an opponent would put one or more counters on a permanent or player, they put half as many of those kinds of counters on that permanent or player instead, rounded down. Vorinclex. I always say Vorniclex. Vorinclex is essentially a hasty dreadmaw. Which is a very good card. And then if you go and put in a bunch of counter stuff into your deck, cool, cool. You got a bonus there. I don't think you're going nutty on like the counter doubling with this in limited. I think it's basically a hasty dread maw, which is pretty dang good. Plus the extra bonus of, you know, you happen to have something that puts counters on something. You have that two mana thing. Um... Oh, it does shut down sagas. That's actually pretty cute. That's actually pretty cute because they go to put a story counter on and it rounds down and puts it to a zero story counters. That's pretty cute, actually. It's probably not going to be hyper relevant, but lore counter, not a story counter. Sure. Probably not hyper relevant, but that's a cool bonus. Again, there's no like counter deck that I've seen in this format. So I don't think you're going nutty with Boring Clex here, other than it being a 6 6 Trample Haste, which is a good card. You're first picking it every time, every time because hey, when, when are you not going to play with the Phyrexian in the set, right? So first pick, pretty happy with it. Um, Planeswalker loyalty doesn't go up. Yeah, if they're plus one, that's true. But again, like 
if my mythic is screwing over their mythic, we're probably not playing limited. Um, yeah, first pick Vorinclex because it's Vorinclex. Be aware, you're probably not getting all of the crazy commander value out of this that you are thinking of in commander. Um, but that is the end. So thank you very much, YouTube, for watching the green set review. Let me know all those things you want to let me know in the comments down below and come join us on Twitch because it's fun over here.